Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today at the BMW Welt in Munich where they've just presented the brand new BMW M8 competition. I am very excited though to announce that I'm going to be getting one of these. It's been a secret for a long time but we're here today at their HQ for the next gen event where this car, the M8 Competition Coupe as well as the M8 Competition Convertible and even the M850i Grand Coupe have all been presented. So my first opportunity to see up close in person a future Schmiemobile. Following from driving the M5 last year, I cannot wait for this. More details to come, but for now, let's explore then the new M8 competition. This is the car then, presented here in frozen Marina Bay Blue metallic at the satin paint finish and looking absolutely incredible. The 8 Series BMW's return to having an 8 in their lineup came with the M850i and also the 840d. We've all been waiting for the M8 to arrive and it has now done so. All at the same time, you've had the launch of the M8 competition in the coupe and the convertible, as well as the non-competition variant as well. Many markets might just see the competition, so that's what we're going to be focusing on this car right here. Now just looking at the front of it, it is low, it is wide, it looks menacing, it looks powerful, it looks like a seriously impressive piece of kit and I've thoroughly enjoyed my driving experiences with the M850i but this turns things up a notch. You have a lot of features seen for example on the M5 competition, you have the MX drive with the switchable four-wheel drive system that you can put entirely in two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive mode, it's got the 4.4 litre turbocharged V8 making 600 125 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque look around here the m8 competition badge you've got new carbon fiber pieces for example the bootlid spoiler that you have up there the aggression down here at the back as well the quad tail pipes with 100 millimeter diameter exhaust tail tips as well there for the exhaust system inside the carbon fiber diffuser it looks incredible and this color option is absolutely fantastic now i've just got the key right here so let's have a quick look at the inside of it in here, a couple of new things to talk about and come straight through actually to highlight one of them, the new M mode. I'll go through this when we take a step inside as well as the setup. So you've still got M1 and M2 modes, but quite a few things you can control, including the integrated brake assist. You can even change that between comfort and sport modes. So this car has a lot going on to it that we're gonna be taking a look at now in detail, but just walking around, it looks really, really nice. I have to say, very impressed. I think a lot of us have been waiting for this to arrive. Many people thought when the M850i launched that was going to be it, maybe that was the M8, but no, this is the M8, the car that we've been waiting for, now presented at the next gen event here at the BMW Velt. To go into some more details then about the car, and if you think about it, when the 8 Series launched, it was technically the successor to the previous BMW 6 Series. The number grew up, we got to the 8, it introduced an additional level of luxury, while still, as they put it, very much positioned as a sports car. Now though, the 8 has gained the M badge, something we've all been waiting for, a BMW M8, and I cannot wait for it. But if you think about this car as the follow-on to say the previous M6, the proportions have actually changed quite a lot. So the car is a fair bit shorter. It also sits significantly lower, as well as being a fair bit wider. The result of that is that when you feast your eyes upon it, it has so much more of a sense of sportiness about it and just dynamic proportions overall. If we focus more though on the design, you might remember when the 8 Series launched, it brought with it this new look to the kidney grills. These very narrow grills that are also incredibly wide, connected in the center, flanked by the narrowest headlights they've ever put on the car. In this case, the BMW laser lights. If we go down below though and this is all very open by the way for cooling the bumpers have changed to allow additional airflow to come through the car all of these vents very very open you can see additional carbon fiber pieces as well here for the m8 and also down below you've got that lower splitter that you can just about make out which of course is to keep the front end of the car planted down to the ground sitting just beneath that lower section of the bumper if we come around towards the side of course you've got the carbon ceramic brakes the gold brake calipers that you have in this case also though with this integrated brake assist Assist, where you can change the pedal feel via the software. First time that's been done on a BMW and something I'm actually really intrigued to see what it's like when taking the car out and driving. On this car, we've got the 20 inch wheels. You can see the dual tone design uh, and style that they've got for them. 
uh, front and rear, as well as running on the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres. As we continue around towards the back, carbon fibre roof, I should say the carbon fibre M door mirrors that you have where they come back towards, uh, towards the front of the A pillar as well. And then down this sloping roof line, a really, really good looking car towards the back. And the rear design of it was all about accentuating the width, making it look planted. And you also, of course, get this carbon fibre lip spoiler uh, on the top of the boot lid. Uh, over and above the M8 badge flanked by their 3D stylized tail lights that you have going around before coming down to the back as we saw earlier with these integrated carbon pieces flanking around the sides uh, of the exhaust tailpipes two on each side and with the additional part of the diffuser running across the length underneath around the sides though it's all of these different shapes that just make it look sporty make it look aggressive but also help with the airflow being smoothed around the back of the car so one thing I didn't mention if we come here the breather that you have just behind the front wheel wells, this is to do with the airflow coming out from the, real, uh, from the front wheel well uh, around the side of the car, giving it that opportunity to be released. So if we just open the car up again, I want to quickly just open up the engine bay, give that a double pull so that we can come round and I can show you what's going on in here. So in this case, you just lift it up. Inside here then, the BMW M Power 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. 625 horsepower, 750 newton meters, mated to an eight speed automatic gearbox that basically has the clutch for the front axle always open. So technically it's mostly a rear wheel drive, except if it detects a lack of traction, it then sends some power to the front to keep you in check. And also by having this brake system, it means that the zero to 62 miles an hour time, 100 kilometer per hour time is just 3.2 seconds, using a lot of computer trickery to make all of that possible. The car comes in at 1885 kilos, not exactly the lightest thing in the world, but certainly a good looker. And if I just come back in to close this down, we've got the double latches, it needs a very hard slam. There we go, down in place, back with that paintwork. The frozen Marina Bay Blue. We saw Marina Bay Blue in its glossy finish uh, previously on the M5. Now here with the frozen finish, BMW's word for the satin paintwork. I am just gonna pop over though to show you quickly the other models that we have here, including the M8 Competition Cabriolet. This is also looking very, very smart. The triple layer fabric roof, of course, folded away at the moment inside the rear deck. That can be operated while you're driving up to 50 kilometers an hour, 31 miles per hour. And inside you can see a few more of the details as well and in fact there are some really very nice touches about this more visible uh, with the open top and all the lights on it like for example the uh, m stitching that you have around the steering wheel also around the gear shifter the red buttons that you have the m1 m2 and the stop start there you can see more of the controls we're going to come back to these in more details you've also got the m8 competition badging there uh, inside the central console as well and also m8 worn here the illuminated badge uh, in the back of the headrest here um, with the air that can blow out behind you as well. So a car that is very well equipped in terms of technology and safety systems and assistance, also looking very, very good, particularly with the roof down. What a car that would be to go and cruise in. And then if we just come the other way, of course, these are the models for the time being, but now also presented is the M850i Grand Coupe. And I don't think it would take a genius to work out that an M8 and M8 competition version of this might be coming in the future. It gives you a bit of the uh, demonstration up front though that you can see of the M850 bumper. So you can see the comparison and just how much more dialed up it is in the M8. But in here, versus the 6 Series Grand Coupe, if we could say. The shape of the roof line has changed quite significantly. Previously, this came down more in a kind of three box configuration, whereas now it looks more like a hatchback. It is still a separate boot uh, and a fixed rear glass. Around the back though, for this kind of car, I think it looks incredibly good. And I'm also very impressed by the amount of space that is available here in the rear. That's a lot of legroom uh, for this kind of car. And when I mean, this is the 530 horsepower version uh, of the 4.4 V8. But when you've got one of these, potentially with 600 horsepower, well, that's going to be moderately epic. For now, though, I'm going to be leaving that. We're going to go find another car so that we can check out how the interior and all the systems work inside the new M8. I've ventured downstairs here at the Velt where there are plenty more cars as well to take a look at, but it's time now to take in some of the new features on the interior of the M8. So this coupe is in the same spec as the car that we were looking at upstairs. Paintwork still looking fantastic. I don't think I mentioned, but those wheels are actually exclusively only for the competition. The non-competition version has different
different wheels on it. And the same also goes for this interior, as we saw upstairs. This is again only for the competition version of the M8, where you have the dual tone with the black and the mid-rand beige. And also, if you have this option, you do get Alcantara as well for the side bolsters, central tunnel, and also the underside of the dashboard. That's the only interior configuration that comes with Alcantara. Now, we've got some incredibly bright display lights here on the stand, but let me take a quick seat inside to run you through some of these features. It's going to be very, very hot in here, but of course, we've got these buttons, the M modes and also the setup. Now, before we go through those, just quickly about the interior, a reminder what the 8 Series is like. For the driver's dashboard, you've got a 12-inch digital display, you've got the digital speedometer around the left, the rev counter at the right, and you can change a number of different features about it. Over in the centre, you've got the 10-inch touchscreen for the latest BMW operating system. You've got these tiles and tablets, and you can slide the screen across and go through a number of different displays and configure this exactly how you would like, adjusting, changing. You've got your navigation, your media, and all of your different controls. Now, in the centre, you might have noticed also, this is a different shift knob versus what you saw in the 8 Series, where it had the crystal clarity style uh, glass effect. This is a more traditional M leather gear knob with stitching around the outside, the M embroidery, and your drive mode selectors here. So you can change uh, the drive feel uh, and ferocity of it, literally, uh, of the eight-speed automatic gearbox. Now down here, these two buttons. Now the way to think of this is M mode is basically your controls while you're out driving. So if you think about this in a kind of race driver setup, setup is what the team would configure for you before you go out. M mode is what you do yourself. So if we press setup just now, you can see how that loads. You can toggle through these different driving modes using the controller or just literally touching them yourself. And it also, it's got the uh, gesture control so you can raise and lower the media volume literally by doing that in the air, all the latest technology in here. So you can see you've got engine, chassis, steering, the integrated brake assist, and also the MX drive. You can press the different buttons, set it up exactly how you would like. And if you wanted to access the MX drive, what you need to do is go down here to the traction control, press and hold, and you can turn that off, which it will do any second. There we go, configure MX drive, and here you can load that up. You've got your four wheel drive, four wheel drive sport, and your two wheel drive. So you've got all of these, set them up, and off you go, ready to drive. I'll just pop them all back for the moment so that you can get a quick idea for what that's like. Now down here, M mode. Let me give one press of this and you'll see what pops up. It basically goes between road, sport and track. Now this is another competition exclusive. The non-competition doesn't have the track mode, but road and sport change a number of different things. You might spot this on the dashboard actually. That's normal road mode that's sport mode a little bit more focused it gives you a quick snapshot of your setup there on the right and also using the board computer here you can scroll through a number of different displays on that turn it off completely or go through all of these different screens where you can see different pieces of information and what exactly is going on your g-force is there as well also your infotainment and back towards your settings now to go into the track mode basically when you're in this and you go you know you're here for example if you press and hold it it will then activate track which disables everything basically you're on your own but what's interesting when you activate it is it actually turns off the display turns off the music and makes this car entirely focused so literally pressing and holding the m mode button to put it into track kind of engages the entire car and one press of the button which i think is really quite cool and then one press again uh, and it will come back on wake itself back up and go back to normal so you've got that you also have on the steering wheel the red m1 and m2 buttons that you can reach with your thumbs those are of course pre-configurable so you could have that set up to jump it kind of into different modes and if i just give you a quick demo of this for example if we press m2 here uh, maybe it needs a second press just to confirm there we go because it's turned off traction control you will see how this is set up so that's how m2 is configured into two-wheel drive you can see the steering and brake so this is what i'm particularly interested in the brake feel comfort and sport will change basically the brake pedal pressure um, in terms of how it feels so comfort will be a little bit softer better for cruising sport will be much more pinpoint sharp so as soon as you uh, do some adjustments on the brake pedal it will respond much quicker so i'm really really intrigued uh, to see how that turns out also just generally looking around here you've got your shift paddles on the back your adaptive cruise control settings here some media controls over on the right you've got your light toggles down here there's a button in there for the powerful tailgate uh, you've got your memory seat controls here uh, you've got the bowers and wilkins sound system down here obviously the illuminated ma competition door sills your seat controls your lumbar support uh, your seat massager i think um, basically a lot of things the door pull down there the m uh, pedal set that you have as well looking very nice down at the bottom 
over towards uh, the central console, your climate control settings, uh, your hotkeys to go through different menu controls. In here, this section opens and closes. You've got your cup holders, USB port, uh, your wireless charging pad, your traditional 12 volt socket as well. And then coming back, you've got all your usual buttons. So the cameras, for example, uh, to help you with parking, it will have park assist, the red engine start stop button. Uh, there's an exhaust mode button, electronic handbrake, and then some hotkeys for your infotainment as well to go around that. And the P button here is to pop it back into park. In the central console, Armrest, you've got a USB C port, another 12 volt socket, uh, and a floor, a rubbery kind of floor to stop things sliding around that you've popped away in there. The split fold opening to that as well. But as with BMWs, this central section all driver focused, pointing in the direction of the driver. I suppose emphasizing that's what this car is about and what it's for. You do have back seats, but I would say it's quite a, a plus two configuration. This kind of leg space is not the largest in the world. Small people probably only, uh, maybe for a short distance, you can have some, some taller adults back there. But decent visibility overall the c-pillar isn't too obstructive and you can see the the rake of that rear window incredibly shallow uh, to the ground very narrow side window exits as well i love the borderless display that you have around the rear view mirror and this style that bmw have with the kind of wave effect as well for their interior lighting anywho as i said and expected it's getting boiling hot in here mirror controls there as well and windows but this thing is looking very nice also another thing i particularly like the M seat belts with the M stripes that you have down there. Just those small touches. I think they integrate very, very well without being overkill, without being too much, make the car look very, very good. So while we're here, just a quick look after all, perfect car for a Grand Tourer, long distance. Let's open up the boot. Have a quick look in the trunk, as some would say. Back here, you've got a slightly obstructed shape, we could say, but it does go back actually a really long way. And you've got these levers to fold down the rear seats as well, which split 50-50 back there. Small storage net for some things here and your first aid kit and toolkit uh, over on that side as well. And quite a wide opening, I guess, easy for putting some suitcases in where you can then close or lock down the back. So. I think that's more or less it then. A first look today here at Next Gen held at the BMW Velt at the new BMW M8 competition. So the M8, a future Schmimobile. I can't tell you all of the details yet. Nothing really about the spec, exactly which version it's gonna be, when it will be, but I will bring you information about that in the future. I'm very, very excited about it. I had a lot of fun with the M5 when I drove that and drove it a lot, did many miles. And I've also done a few test drives in M850i's. But I've been waiting and hoping that this was going to arrive and it has now. BMW have launched the M8, launching straight away with the competition as well. A very exciting car and I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the first opportunity we've had to be able to explore it and take in all of the features. That's it for now though. Thank you very much as always guys for your support. Do be sure to be subscribed to continue the adventure and the journey with the M8 in future. That's it for now though. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!